PowerQ provides a single pane of glass for data center managers to manage their power, energy, and environmental conditions for their complete data center. I'm going to give you a short demonstration of some of the capabilities that PowerQ provides to data center managers. Our start off with that PowerQ is a flexible data collection engine that turns data into information for data center managers. And this information, first and foremost, provides an at-a-glance view of the health, power, and cooling conditions of the data center. And I'll start with our highly user configurable dashboard. Each user can have their own dashboard, and they can have as many dashboard reports as you want. In my particular system, I have set up seven dashboards. These dashboards are displayed across the top as favorites so that you can select one report to another. Right now I'm looking at a health map, so I click this. This is my default dashboard, but I can easily switch to a cooling chart for site A, look at data center loads, and so on. Let's start with the health map. The health map provides an easy red, green, yellow indication of the health of cabinets, UPSs, cracks, RPPs, all your data center equipment. And I see a cabinet is red, cabinet 1A, and I click and I can drill down and open up an inspector and get the cabinet load, the cabinet capacity, sensor conditions, and the alerts that have caused this cabinet to go into a critical condition. In this particular case, we're measuring the load of the cabinet and comparing it to thresholds that were set by the user on the capacity of the cabinet, and that is what has been violated. I can also look at the individual rack PDUs, their load, their inline currents, and if there are any conditions that are triggering warning or critical alerts in that area. I have hyperlinks to further drill down, so if I want to drill down into 1A, I might open that up into a new tab. It'll quickly find cabinet 1A and open up what we call our smart rack view. So I can see the contents of cabinet 1A in terms of rack PDUs, servers, and sensors. But then I have what we call our quick charts, which I can chart over time the active power, environmental conditions, or other information. These quick charts come out of the box configured then I have the ability to make some adjustments based upon what type of readings I want and what period of time I want. I can also look at the cabinet contents. If I have outlet metered PDUs, I can measure the load on an outlet by outlet basis. I can associate outlets from many, uh, many outlets to IT devices from multiple rack PDUs and see spark charts for the individual load of the individual outlet, knowing the load at any point in time, as well as the total load. A very popular dashboard widget is our cooling chart, which provides a number of ASHRAE ranges that you can measure your sensors against. In this particular case, I'm going against ASHRAE 2011, and I'm selecting an allowed envelope of class A1 equipment. So I'm saying that my equipment in my data center is at least A1 type, and therefore I'm measuring the temperature from the inlet or the cold aisle and comparing that to the recommended and the allowable ranges. I also have the ability to set my own custom range if I want to measure myself against Hewlett Packard, IBM, Dell, or my own standards. And this provides the blue line is the recommended range. So if a sensor humidity pair is within the blue line, in this particular case, 71.2 degrees and 44% humidity is within the recommended range. The sensor pair is green and counts towards my conformance index. If a sensor pair is outside of the recommended range, but within the allowable range, then it's yellow and we give an in easy indication of the non-conformance. In this particular case, it's too hot. And if it's outside the allowable range, then it's red. This recommended range allows customers to operate in greater envelopes of time or location in terms of free cooling because they're certifying that their equipment can handle 
the more extreme conditions that, that ASHRAE has uh, specified as an allowable range based upon the class of equipment. If all your sensor pairs are within the recommended range, then we'll estimate your savings. I have widgets that are gauges that I can measure my load by data center, my rack, or any level within the hierarchy. I can trend over time virtually any measurement in my data center from active power, current, energy, carbon footprint, energy cost, total energy including cooling, total energy cost including cooling, inlet temperature, airflow, air pressure, etc. Very flexible chart and reporting and I have the ability to export my data typically. I have an events widget that I can see a listing of all my alarms with the ability to drill down to see what's going on in that particular case, as well as an overall health view, event view, and connectivity view. PowerIQ is a single pane of glass for all your systems. You can integrate with our HTML widget weather services or any other web service or system and display on the dashboard. In this particular case, I'm showing a weather service for a national radar from NOAA and then a drill down into the southeast region. We have a widget for capacity forecasts, which takes your observed load, trends it, compares it to capacity, and gives you an indication of how many days of capacity supply you'll have. In this particular case, my load trend line, because I'm using simulators, is flat, so I'm not going to run out of capacity anytime soon. We make it easy to track PUE at any level by site, trend over time. This can be fully automated to have the highest accuracy PUE where you're collecting load from facility objects as well as IT objects updated daily. Or if your metering infrastructure is not fully mature and you have the need to enter manual readings for part of your total facility load or part of your IT load, we provide that type of flexibility. Creating a new dashboard is very easy. It's all modern drag and drop technology. So if I just want to create a summary dashboard, I have my widget gallery. I select the number of rows. In this particular case, I'll select two rows. But I have the ability to drag and drop a floor map, PUE gauge, PUE chart, cooling chart, trend chart, trending for facilities, health bar chart, capacity forecast chart, gauge that can measure the gauge, uh, the load of a rack, a data center, my active events, pictures, titles, and the HTML widget. So for example, if I want to drag and drop a trend line, a cooling chart, and a gauge, I also have the ability to adjust the sizes by dragging and dropping and save. I go to the settings widget and have easy navigation to allow me to select what I want to chart, what ASHRAE range, and I say save. I have my gauge here, again select the settings widget, select what I want to display in the gauge, save, and then my trend chart, similarly if I deselect the legend, I select that I want to chart all my sites, so one line per child, active power past 24 hours, and save. There's many more options, I'm just hitting the, the high level. And that's as easy as it can be to set up a dashboard, and then from here you can continue to just make changes. If you say I want to add another gauge, you just drag and drop, bring that gauge up, and changes are easy. Dashboards can be shared just by clicking the share button. And we have what we call a slideshow mode. We have the ability to select a number of 
dashboards. It'll go into full screen mode and it'll cycle through each dashboard that you've selected. And if you keep the dashboard on a knock screen for a long period of time, you know, five minutes, data will automatically update based upon individual cycles. So for example, events are displayed every 30 seconds. So if a new event comes in every 30 seconds, all the events are updated. So you're getting your latest alarm information, even if you have a long display cycle on a large knock screen or in your, lo in your lobby of your building. PowerIQ has a full data center hierarchy, so the ability to associate PDUs, outlets with IT devices, to get loads by IT devices, associate IT devices and PDUs within racks, racks within rows, and so on up the hierarchy. And one of the differentiations of PowerIQ is that we automatically sum the load up at each level to make it tremendously easy to chart loads by row, loads by rack, or report on loads by row or rack because of this automatic summation with, with no additional configuration. Navigating the data center hierarchy is tremendously easy. I just click on rack one and I get my smart charts for rack one, as well as my ability to look at an individual IT device and see smart charts for the load of the IT device over time, as well as the outlet or circuit association with this IT device. Device is, can be put into device groups. We have a patent for graceful shutdown, so you can have a shutdown command entered, and when you cycle the power on this device, you can choose to go through graceful OS shutdown or a hard shutdown to just cycle the outlets. Power control is made easy. It's optional if it's enabled. You merely click a button to power cycle the device. We have configurable delays and sequencing for power control, as well as the ability to specify that an answer needs to be entered for why you want a power cycle. And those answers go into the audit log for full audit log tracking. We have a sortable filterable event log so that all your alarms can be displayed according to whatever filters you set. So for example, if I just want to see Critical alerts, I would select critical alerts and that's all I would see. In most cases, we provide the ability to export information so that they can take the information and use it. We have a PDUs tab, which makes it very easy to see PDU by PDU organized in different groupings. And uh, you can filter or sort by load. So if you wanna see which PDU has greater than a certain load, I can enter that. So let's say greater than three. And I could sort on devices that have higher than a certain load. I could set my default view. I could also go back to the original view very easily. I can group them by cabinets, by group by this field. And here's the PDUs that I have in this system, this particular system, these are simulators of these PDUs. So right now the load is static, but at an at a glance view, I can see the three phase currents with bolded for the highest phase current. I could see the active power and the latest pole and the temperature. I could drill down and see exactly how this PDU looks within Power AQ. Each PDU gets their own smart chart for active power over time, energy, three phase currents, inlet readings of current, active power, line readings of current, sensors associated with this PDU, outlet readings of active power, apparent power current with spark charts and the associated IT device with a hyperlink so I can go to that IT device that's associated with that particular outlet. PowerIQ is very flexible reporting. You can create as many reports as you want. These reports are your own reports. 
And I've created just a couple here. So for example, a bill back report where I can have customers as my query and the total load over a period of time and the sum of load. Creating a report is extremely easy. You select what you want to display for each row, either time, a tag. So a tag group is a category such as customer. A tag is an element of a tag group such as the customer name. For example, maybe Citibank or American Express. EDM node means your data center hierarchy such as a rack, room, or row. So if I wanted each row to be a rack, I would select EDM node and then select racks, just for example. I have a summary function. Do I want to sum up the readings of the column? Get the minimum of all the elements, the maximum of all the elements? Set the time period? I could set what measurements I want to report on, along with filters, such that if I want to run a report that gives me only the devices that are less than a certain load, I can do that. I can add tags to filter on, for example, all the devices owned by a specific customer, such as Citibank. And I could schedule reports to be emailed to me or to others based upon a daily, weekly, or monthly basis as a PDF or a CSV file. We have a specialized report called a failover report, which will give you a cabinet by cabinet view. In this particular cabinet 1A, I see the load of my three phases for each PDU, and then what would be the load if there was a failover? What would be the result? I can have other reports such as load by rack, temperature by rack, and creating a new report is tremendously easy. You just select, for example, what type of report you want. And this gives me a report of all my IT devices and the load for the period of time that I've selected, as well as we track report history. So every time you run this, we save a copy of the data. So for example, if you have a billing report and you want to look at what the report was at a different month, you just click and you get the data from that time that it was run. This completes a high-level demonstration of Power IQ.